Hey, hello, folks. How are you? My name is Enrique Palafox. I'm here with Daker Stoker. Daker, how are you today? I'm just doing as well as normal. I think I may be doing better than Jonathan Harker because I had a very good sleep last night. I didn't have any bad dreams, and I'm not waking up to looking for Count Dracula somewhere in the castle. So, you know, what a I'm doing well. And you? Guy. Poor guy. He is, he's in some kind of trouble right now, no? He, he is, and I've, and I've got to share with the viewers that I, I mentioned earlier that there's so much about Bram Stoker himself mm -hmm. that comes out in Jonathan Harker. Mm -hmm. So wh why don't we just translate that, and then I'll tell you what I think is the connection. Wonderful. Thank you. Hola, amigos. Eh, bienvenidos otra vez a su página. Estoy eh, con, con Daker Stoker platicando desde South Carolina. Estamos platicando un poco de la situación de Jonathan Harker, muy complicada, tuvo una semana difícil y ahorita precisamente nos va a contar Daker cómo es que Bram Stoker se relaciona con su relato. Ok, Daker. So, here's, here's the connection that comes out in this entry, June 25th, that when Bram Stoker was a young boy, we all know he was very sick for seven years and he developed a very dark sense of imagination. And... I believe it's because Bram had many nightmares, mm -hmm. many horrible thoughts. Mm -hmm. And when you read Dracula, you can see that Lucy has nightmares, Jonathan has nightmares, Mina has nightmares. One of the, the best quotes to me in the whole book is when the Count says to Jonathan Harker in chapter three, there are bad dreams for those who sleep unwisely. Wow, let me translate that. that Estamos yeah. hablando de la, la, la relación que tiene Bram Stoker con su relato en todo momento. Eh, recordemos que Bram fue un niño muy enfermizo hacia, hacia, hacia los primeros años de su, de, su, de su vida y que estuvo en cama, ¿no? Entonces, que tuvo muchas pesadillas. Entonces, mucho de lo que estamos viendo ahorita y lo que dice Daker es que eh, Jonathan Harker, Lucy y muchos de los personajes están teniendo pesadillas. Esas pesadillas son un reflejo de lo que él le pasaba cuando era niño, cuando estaba enfermo. Hey, Daker, um, I, I read in, in some book, I, 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 I don't recall uh, where that uh, there is a theory that uh, maybe Bram was dope with opium and, and, and that's maybe the reason why he was uh, so, so, so sick in, in, in his first uh, years. Is there a possibility that the, the, it, the it, 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 it is? Listen, it's, it is a possibility, although we have no, no knowledge of this, nothing recorded. Mm -hmm. um, what, what I believe happened to, to Bram that caused his seven year illness was respiratory allergies. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he had fevers because of that. He was allergic to things. He was also asthmatic, which mm -hmm. makes it very difficult to breathe. Yeah. And during that time, I believe he was bloodlet because mm -hmm. one of his uncles was a famous bloodletting doctor. So the leeches or the cutting to remove the bad blood. Mm -hmm. And it's also possible that to relax the poor kid, if he was under great stress, they mm -hmm. gave him laudanum, which was morphine, you know, yeah. mixed with, with water, which is an opioid. So it's, it's quite possible that that has, you know, they gave that sort of drug to people for all kinds of problems. So it's quite possible that happened to Bram. And it was a very, very common medicine in, in the, in, in, on the time, I mean. Yeah, absolutely. It, if you look now, it was, it was in the cough syrup that they yeah. had this, this thing. It was everything. So translate that part, and then let me read to you what I think is Bram Stoker himself coming out in the very beginning of our reading. Wonderful. Eh, le, le hice una pregunta que en algún lugar dice, eh, yo había leído que eh, a, a lo mejor parte de la enfermedad de, de Bram venía de, de, de las medicinas que tomaba. Recordamos que en ese entonces pues, se utilizaban muchos opios y, y opiáceos ¿no? que tenían que ver con el opio y entonces bueno le daban lauda ¿no? eh, porque bueno tenía esta enfermedad. No, que tenía un, uno de sus tíos eh, utilizaba eh, um, sanguijuelas ¿no? para sacarle precisamente la sangre mala ¿no? en esas creencias y también se le daba. Entonces, aunque no hay una eh, certeza de, de por qué tuvo la enfermedad, pero bueno, hay una posibilidad de que sí pueda ser por todas estas condiciones. Ok. One of the reasons this poor boy was, I think, suffering from nightmares and bad dreams 
was the stories that he was told by his mother and his nanny. They're, they're not rosy, upbeat, happy stories. One of them we know for sure is the story of people during the cholera epidemic that his mother lived through being buried prematurely, misdiagnosed of illness and pushed into communal graves with lots of other dead bodies. And one of them, one of their neighbors, dragging themselves out, not dead or undead. And I imagine that Bram, with his illness as a young boy, probably imagine that could happen to him mm-hmm. and what would happen if he woke up and he was in a grave or in a coffin and this was something that many people in the victorian era were very worried about premature yeah. burial because yeah. misdiagnosis the medical profession wasn't very advanced yeah and this was happening quite a lot so let me read this this the first state the first sentence from the june 25th entry jonathan harker's journal mm-hmm no man knows till he has suffered from the night how sweet and dear to his heart and eye the morning can be. Wow. Yeah. Lo que estamos platicando. Translate that part. Yeah. Ok. Lo que estamos platicando es eh, precisamente eh, todas estas situaciones que llevan a la escritura de la novela, ¿no? Mucho de, de estas, eh, del origen de estas pesadillas vienen de los cuentos que le contaba su madre, no tanto como cuentos, sino, o sea, que se contaba, con, se sentaba a contarle historias, tanto ella como su, su, su nana. No le contaba historias y una de las historias que, que, que realmente eh, se tiene certeza que, que, que fue contada Abraham era la, la historia de la pandemia, hablando de pandemias, hablando de, eh, fue una epidemia de cólera, ¿no? Eh, hacia 1800. Eh, 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 which, ¿Which was the year of the pandemic? ¿Cólera pandemic? Eight, eight, 1832 is, is the one his mother went through, but there okay. was another one closer to Bram's, Bram's childhood as well, as well as potato famine. Ya, yeah. yeah, in Ireland. Yes. Ya. Yeah. Eh, eh, hubo do, dos situaciones complicadas para, para, para la mamá de Abraham, una en el 32, 37, perdón. Entonces, ahí este, la, la cólera, bueno, arrasó un poco y esas historias se las contó Abraham cuando era chico. Y la otra, bueno, fue esta que ya habíamos analizado aquí en la página, que fue eh, la, 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 el problema de las papas en Irlanda, que toda la cosecha se echó a perder. Entonces, mucha gente, pues, murió literal de hambre. Entonces, estas historias de cadáveres, ¿no? Literal cayéndose en las calles, ¿no? Y que los tenían que llevar a, a, a pues, lugares donde los, los juntaban como en, en fosas comunes, pues se le metía la idea a, a, al pequeño Bram, entonces se imaginaba que estas cosas le podían pasar a él. Entonces todos esos aterra, a, a, aterrados momentos, pues son el, 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 el pretexto perfecto para, eh, para escribir la parte de Drácula y, y justo nos leyó la parte donde eh, eh, Jonathan dice que no hay momento más hermoso por una persona que tiene pesadillas que ver el amanecer y encontrarse en seguridad. Ok. So, so do, do you want me to read that statement yes. again or did you, you did it? Yes, yes, yes. Can, can you do that again? So I can okay. translate it. So very, I'll, re- very, I'll read it in two, in two parts and then you can translate it halfway. No man knows till he has suffered from the night how sweet and dear to his heart and eye the morning can be. Ningún hombre eh, puede, puede saber lo dulce que puede ser el amanecer después de una noche de, 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 de tanto sufrimiento y de tantas pesadillas. And then at the end of that paragraph, imagine Jonathan Harker's waking up or Bram Stoker waking up from a night full of sweat and horror and fear. He says, my fear fell from me as if it had been a vaporous garment which dissolved in the warmth. Wow. Eh, es muy poética la narrativa, pero básicamente está hablando de eh, esos, esos terrores, cómo se van disolviendo, a, a, ahora que ve el amanecer, cómo se van disolviendo, ¿no? En, en, en una forma como una, como una, como una, eh, un, un cobertor muy, muy, muy caliente, ¿no? Porque es esta sensación de, de tranquilidad. Ok. So this is the day that Harker, after his nights of horror, wakes up with great resolve Mm -hmm. that he is now going to do something. He says, action, I must do something. Mm -hmm. And that is take a great risk Mm -hmm. to break out of his room Mm -hmm. by literally climbing out the window like the Count did and climbing along the rocks and going into the room 
where he believes the count is to see if he can find him somewhere in the castle. So this is a, a time, you know, he's recovered from the horror of night and he's mm -hmm. got to do something about this. But just before he does, there's one more sentence that I need to read and, and you need to translate. It has always been at nighttime that I have been molested or threatened or in some way in danger or in fear, which tells us the night, and this is all the, where these superstitions come from, this is the darkness, the prince of darkness, the count, the bats, the wolves, the owls, all these other mysterious creatures are nighttime creatures. Mm -hmm. and, and Jonathan is confirming this here where bad things happen at night, but now it's daytime, I can go and take this big risk and do some action to try to go and find and do something about this count. Yeah, he's, he, he has been pushed so hard that he has to take that, that amount of risk to, 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 yes. to go in, in a safe place. Yes. <laughs> Esta parte es importante porque, bueno, eh, aquí ya vemos a un Jonathan Harker desesperado, ¿no? Tras estas eh, terribles terrores nocturnos, porque otra vez la narrativa es tremenda, ¿no? Eh, son estos terrores nocturnos que lo acercan de noche, que lo aterran de noche, que, que lo paralizan de noche, pero que en la mañana ya eh, tiene como esta salvación. Y ahí es donde Jonathan agarra la fortaleza para llegar a, a, a buscar la salida ¿no? y encontrar eh, eh, el escape del castillo. Entonces toma un gran riesgo eh, saliendo por la ventana y tratando de ir a, a, a seguir a esa figura que, que se esconde por, las, por la ventana. Entonces aquí es un poquito, eh, Harker ha sido empujado ¿no? en esta parte de tanto terror que hoy ya toma la resolución de hacer algo, ¿no? hacer algo al respecto. Ok. So the action continues. He has this great scene where he climbs out the window and crawls along the rocks and goes into the, um, finds the count in this old chapel that's been converted into a graveyard. And sure enough, he looks around. And I find it very interesting the way Bram describes this next piece. And it's not something you have to translate, but he says, The only thing I found was a great heap of gold in one corner, gold of all kinds, Roman, British, Austrian, Hungarian, Greek, and Turkish money, all covered with a film of dust. It laid on the, uh, the ground for a long time. None of it was less than 300 years old. So here is a detail that Bram Stoker has to put into the story to make it very real, very human. Mm -hmm. You know, if there was no... Um, sort of description of finding this jewelry and gold, mm -hmm. it could be a much more of a supernatural novel. But mm -hmm. the the idea is why the the reader should should be questioning why does this supernatural creature need all this gold? Well, maybe at one time he was human, or at one time he had human victims that he either stole from or acquired their their wealth when he conquered them or had them as visitors in his castle, it creates a very human connection between the human Jonathan Harker and the supernatural count where you now have money, currency that is, that is needed for, for, for living. But certainly a supernatural creature doesn't need it, but it gives you that feeling of something is both human and supernatural as yeah. he's found this room. I haven't thought about it, but uh, you're you're right. I, I, I mean, as uh, as subtle as it could be, that 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 detail that to have the money placed in the in the in the count's room, it makes him very very human. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Esta parte es bien interesante y me gusta mucho el análisis que está haciendo Daker porque estamos hablando de que eh, Jonathan eh, sale de la, de la ventana y, y, y se mete al, al, al cuarto del conde tomando mucho riesgo escalando por la, por la pared del castillo y de repente entra a este cuarto ¿no? donde, donde se encuentra bueno pues una, una pila de oro, ¿no? esta pila de oro que tiene pues muchas eh, referencias porque es oro de, de muchas partes estamos hablando que puede ser de muchas de sus víctimas a lo largo del tiempo, pero lo que es bien interesante es que el oro le da una, un, un, un pie 
eh, de humanidad a, a, a la creación del personaje del Conde Drácula. No es solamente una criatura sobrenatural, sino que es una criatura que ha ido guardando estos tesoros que pueden ser de sus víctimas o de su momento cuando era humano y que le era importante, pero bueno, pues ahorita que ya no lo necesita, pues ha ido acumulando oro. Pero bueno, finalmente es un detalle que le da un, un realismo importante a su vampiro, ¿no? Ok. There's also uh, Bram Stoker, the artist, the very descriptive writer coming out when he discusses the smell of the dirt. Mm -hmm. And he says the, the odor of the freshly turned dirt, mm -hmm. which again is, is uh, you know, most writers would do this, but Bram was, was such a detail-oriented guy. He wanted to create the feeling of this stench of, of this dirt, where this creature lived in the dirt which which is fantastic and it gives the feeling this very visceral feeling of this room that he's walked into not only does it have the gold and silver and money but it's got this horrible foul smelling dirt which just gives you this feeling of decay rot and death coming back to life Th that is important because uh, earth uh, ca can be a, a very warm thing if if you place it in in, in some some areas it, it can be a very uh, warm feeling but in this case uh, describing the smell uh, it, it it gives you no other place to go to, into a this kind of disgusting area that I, I really don't want to be there no eh, Bram es un genio de la narrativa, entonces esta parte es eh, muy interesante porque pone muchos detalles por ahí perdidos. Uno de ellos es que describe a la hora que Jonathan empieza a avanzar en su, en, 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 en su búsqueda, ya en el cuarto y que baja las escaleras, pues empieza a describir, por ejemplo, los olores, ¿no? Estos olores de la tierra eh, fresca que se ha movido, esta tierra que acuérdense que estaban los gitanos ahí paleando, ¿no? Este, y, y bueno, que se, 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 se huele fétida y entonces Bram lo escribe escribe con un olor horrible para ponerte en esa situación. Si bien la tierra puede ser algo cálido, ¿no? Dependiendo de dónde sea, ¿no? Bram se toma la molestia de escribir el, el, el olor para llevarnos a un lugar donde no queremos estar. Okay. So the next the next thing I'm going to read it to me is sort of an interesting connection between Bram Stoker and Henry Irving in the theater. It's mm -hmm. always I think weighs heavily on Bram's mind. Mm -hmm. well, when Irving and Stoker were in Paris, and we also believe possibly in Munich, mm -hmm. when we talk about the dead house, the places where the bodies are put. Henry Irving wanted to make sure during the plays that he did, and Bram was right there with him and very close to this, what does a dead person look like? How do you lift a dead person over your shoulder? How do you portray a, a dead person on stage? And so this next piece, I think, is very close to what Bram and Irving went through. And this shows that Bram was sensitive to this. And I'm going to read it, and you translate, and then stop, and then I'll read a little bit more, because it's quite long. So this is where Count is lying in a coffin, and Harker opens it up and sees him for the first time. He was either dead or asleep. I could not say which. For eyes were open and stony. Eh, esta parte es eh, una relación muy importante que tiene Bram, ¿no? En, en su paso con, con Henry Irving en, en, en París, que estaba buscando la manera de representar un muerto. Entonces, buscando un poco, aquí viene eh, Dacre, nos está narrando lo que escribe Jonathan a la hora que se encuentra el, el cuerpo de, del conde en el ataúd. Entonces, está medio abierto y entonces es que se asoma y que, que, que lo ve que, 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 que está pálido, que está rígido y que sus ojos son como de piedra. So, but without the glassiness of death, mm -hmm. and his cheeks had the warmth of life through all of their pallor, his lips were as red as ever, but there was no sign of movement, no pulse, no breath, no beating of the heart. Aquí está escribiendo el cuerpo, literal como lo ve, que es un, una palidez, hay una rigidez mortuoria, no hay, no hay pulso, no hay movimientos, no hay respiración, entonces simplemente está prácticamente in, inerte. Now I am, I am sure that his brother, Thornley Stoker, 
explain to Bram how do you be sure somebody is dead from as a doctor? Because as we know, as I said earlier, so many people were misdiagnosed mm -hmm. back in the Victorian era, all these deaths because of cholera and other things. And it was no sign of movement, no pulse, mm -hmm. no breathing, no beating of the heart. And that's, you know, some very human signs. And this is what Harker is looking at. Bram is kind of writing, this is how you decide if a person is dead or alive. Harker sees no sign of life from the standpoint of a human being. Eh, teniendo una influencia muy importante de su hermano Thorny, eh, que era doctor, ya lo habíamos platicado, ¿no? él, él, él le vino a dar como ciertos eh, de, tips para la escritura de, de, de cómo representar un cadáver. Entonces, eh, Bram está describiendo lo que él pensaría, cómo se tendría que buscar los signos de vida. Entonces, eh, literal, estamos viendo a Jonathan tratando de encontrar eh, pues esos señales que Bram eh, tenía como muy claro, que era la respiración, el pulso, el movimiento, ¿no? y, y bueno, pues no encuentra nada. Okay. So we end this 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 uh, this part of the story mm -hmm. when he looks into his eyes. He sees no sign of life. He says, "I saw the dead eyes, and in them dead, though they were the look of hate, the unconsciousness of me or my presence." So he realized that even though the count was dead, he had hate in his eyes, seeing him there. So Jonathan Harker had to escape. He knew it was trouble. He got out and he then crawled again up the castle wall to get back to his room. Now, Enrique, I find this very interesting because we now are given this little hint. Mm -hmm. How does Jonathan Harker travel on walls so easily, both getting to the Count's room and coming back? I think Bram is being very subtle and saying, suggesting to us, As the Count was able to climb on the wall because he's supernatural, maybe Jonathan Harker has had the exchange of blood and he's slowly turning supernatural because he's climbing so easily up the castle wall himself. Just a subtle suggestion, maybe. Wow, eh, muy interesante esta, este relato porque bueno, eh, Jonathan eh, sigue descubriendo el cadáver y de repente en los ojos, a pesar de que está mu muerto la figura que tiene ahí, en los ojos alcanza a ver el odio del conde de saber que él está ahí, entonces él reconoce el peligro inmediato y sale corriendo, pero aquí viene una, una, un cuestionamiento muy interesante, ¿cómo es posible que Jonathan pueda escalar tan fácilmente eh, las paredes de, de, del castillo?, porque eh, eh, es, sabemos que el conde es un ser sobrenatural. Entonces aquí viene un poco la sutileza de Bram que, que, que pone Daker, que probablemente eh, al, al, al ser ya eh, inducido, a, al haber sido mordido, eh, ya se estaba empezando a convertir y por lo tanto ya a, agarraba habilidades sobrenaturales y por eso podría escapar. Ok. And the very final line in this entry, I threw myself panting on the bed and I tried to think. Now, if you remember, we've had references in the whole part of the story of this chess match going back and forth between Jonathan Harker and the Count. And the one advantage that Harker has, as he is still human, is that he has a human brain and the reason and the ability to think. And he believes the Count is more of an animal and does not have that ability to think as much He's more instinctive. He's more cruel. He is a killing machine. But this is the one advantage. If it's used, if it's used well, as long as Jonathan Harker remains a human being, not a supernatural creature, he tries to think. And he's got to think about what he just see, what, he, what just happened, and how can I use this to my advantage to get an advantage over the count or make an escape. Regresamos a la charla donde todo es un juego de ajedrez, ¿no? Y entonces aquí es este ida y vuelta entre los dos grandes poderes, las dos grandes mentes, tanto está por un lado Harker y el otro eh, Drácula, el conde Drácula. Sin embargo, Jonathan es el que tiene la mente humana, es el que todavía piensa y el conde es mucho más visceral, es mucho más animal, entonces reacciona más por instinto. Entonces justo cuando llega a su cuarto, él empieza a utilizar esa ventaja, ¿no? Y a poner su, su cerebro a trabajar para ver cómo eso lo va a ayudar a, a escapar de una mente tan visceral y tan reactiva como la del Conde Drácula. Okay. 
And that's it for this week, folks. That's the, that's our insight. Um, I just, you know, I, I just wait with my bated breath to figure out now we're in Transylvania. Can Jonathan survive? Does he get out? And then also my mind drifts back to what is going on, obviously, in Whitby with, with all the rest of the Band of Heroes. So we'll see you guys next week and uh, keep enjoying reading us in Dracula's Place. And please go to the Dracula store. We have new things being unloaded every single day. And soon we're even going to have our Bram Stoker bobbleheads at our Dracula store. So hopefully Bram Stoker is in agreement. Hopefully you are too. <risa> I love the figure with the, with the book um, eh, Esta parte es increíble Porque bueno, pues eh, hasta aquí llega la, 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 El relato de esta semana Estamos en un momento in, muy padre Lleno de, 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 de mucha tensión de, 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 de muchas acciones Donde vemos pues ya un, Una situación desesperada para Jonathan Y bueno, pues, estamos esperando a ver qué es lo que sucede En el Inter, como dice Daker eh, Pues sigan eh, eh, Al pendiente esta semana de todo lo que ya viene Porque ya em, empieza a reactivarse para ver qué es lo que va a pasar en Whitby, bueno, con los otros personajes, ¿no? Y por el otro lado, bueno, pues no dejen de visitar nuestra tienda en Dracula Store, porque ya ca cada día estamos subiendo más cosas, por ejemplo, The, the Little Bobblehead que tiene Daker por ahí, ya, ya, ya va a estar por acá, listo, y, y otras cosas más para, para que ustedes lo disfruten. Así que dense una vuelta en, en, la, en la tienda y por supuesto síganos leyendo, vean nomás ese Bram Stoker, I love it. It's a good, good, good figure. It's, it, to, it's, to it's pretty cool. I mean, I've seen that uh, Mark Twain has bobblehead, Lovecraft, Poe, uh, the Queen Elizabeth, all the soccer players, football players, and now yeah. finally Bram Stoker I'm gets his own bobblehead. Wonderful. So thank you, Daker. This was a, 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 an awesome week. Uh, this is one of my favorite parts of the novel. Thank you for sharing this, this conversation with us. Absolutely. See you next week. Thank you. Gracias, amigos. Pues hasta aquí llegamos. Esta fue una gran semana llena de mucho misterio, mucho de mucho terror. Así que no se lo pierdan. Nos vemos la siguiente semana. Gracias. Hasta pronto. <música>